trust me, you won't want to miss a second of this. I'm pitting artists versus art clients against the most popular topics that I see come up all the time. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to The Art Mentor. My name is Sean. I'm a better art teacher and freelance artist. And whether you are an artist or an art buyer, you will want to hear all of this. So let's see who comes out on top, and we're going to start right now. So, y'all, for round one, we are going to start off with pricing. Yes, this is the most heated topic because I see this as a really common issue people talk about a lot. How much should art be worth? How much is fair to charge? From the client perspective on pricing, they're thinking it should definitely be low. I mean, for goodness sake, they're not going to Feng Zoo for this. They're not contacting an illustration agency for this. They're coming to you. You are a private artist for this. They might be looking at it as, oh, hey, well, I'm giving someone a shot here. And from the client perspective, you gotta remember, they're thinking, well, hey, look, I'm not rich, y'all, so I'm just gonna go ahead and buy art from somebody because I can't afford those big time illustrators, and that's why they come to you. Now, the artist's perspective on pricing is that pricing needs to be fair, and they should be compensated with high wages. And from the artist's perspective, this is totally okay to ask for hundreds of dollars for art because it takes lots of time and effort, and it takes lots of investment to get to there. So it's only fair that you be compensated for it, and it doesn't matter who that person is coming to you. What they also note is that artists generally feel very afraid. They feel very anxious about having to ask for three digits on artwork. They've seen lots of poor pricing practices all over the internet, and therefore they feel that they are not able to hit competitive wages because there are so many people out there charging single and barely double digit numbers for our work. So therefore they have to lower themselves. So for this round, I definitely gotta give it to the artists, all right? Here's the truth, y'all. And this is very black and white, right or wrong, is that when you are dealing with art, it is dealing with somebody who is a skilled tradesman. And that means that it takes lots of years and time and investment in order to do these things. And I just wanna relate this to a couple other skilled trades. Think about plumbers, think about carpenters, think about mechanics. Now, one different thing about artists versus any of the skilled trades that I just mentioned there is that first off, art is not a necessity in life. You don't need to have it, it is a luxury. So if you are an artist watching this, I just wanna power you real quick. You should feel comfortable asking for fair wages for them. Now, I just made a whole video about all the issues surrounding low pricing and, and lowballing yourself. So go ahead and watch that after this. In round two, we're gonna now discuss estimates and quoting. So how should clients be able to know exactly what they're gonna get and how much it costs so that they can plan for it? Should artists just be able to charge whatever they want? Should this be a mysterious process or should this be a process with a lot of transparency? Let's examine. From a client's perspective, before they even reach out to an artist, before they even show any type of interest, they feel that they should be able to look at some ultra specific sheet and be able to say, okay, well, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Clients may also want to be able to just take a look and say, okay, well, a character is X amount as if art is something that you can just stuff into a UPS box and just say, well, as long as it fits within that, that's how much it costs. Now, a lot of clients are very anxious to reach out to an artist, and that's why they tend to appreciate when it just everything is out there and it's not mysterious. Now, on the flip side here, artists feel that they should be able to charge accordingly to whatever they want. However, though, you're gonna see a lot of artists not doing this. Again, due to a lot of really common practices out there that are not very successful, by the way, you're gonna see a lot of artists just really undercharging themselves and they're going to make their pricing too generic. Now, another thing that artists will wanna do is when they're going to be accepting clients, all they're gonna want is somebody to fill out a Google form, send them an email or send them a DM and they're just gonna be able to go, boom, this is exactly how much it's gonna cost. Now, the results of round two, this is a double knockout because I'm going to be honest, both of them are very wrong in how they're approaching this. First off, on the topic of quoting somebody, you cannot know all of the details about a project until you are actually invested into a conversation with them. A lot of artists struggle with this because a lot of artists want this really robotic version where they just want to spell everything out and they want clients to come to them already knowing that they are going to pay instead of investing some time into really getting to know the intricacies of the project and making sure that they are therefore fairly compensated. Now, if you're not really certain how to go ahead and do this and what shape this looks like, I actually made an entire video about how you should talk to our clients and how you should use a conversation method rather than a robotic price sheet or a commission sheet. God help you if you're using commission sheet and you've been watching this channel for a while, but that's linked down below. So go ahead and watch that after this. For round three, we are going to slug it out about payment. So what is right, what is wrong, and what's even scammy? Let's check this out. 
From the client's perspective, there's no guarantee that they're going to like it. And therefore they feel that it is okay and it is definitely acceptable to go ahead and ask for work to be done before any type of payment is rendered. And this can be in the form of split payments, partial payments, or just overall everything at the end. They could be waiting until they get a sketch or a line art or a color comp, or the whole thing is completed before the artist even gets a penny. They don't really have a lot of confidence in that process, especially if they're going to a new artist that they're unfamiliar with. They are not really certain that they're gonna get what they want out of it. And this seems fair, right? Because they want the product before they render payment. Now, from the artist's perspective, artists feel that they need payment first. However, though, they are also very afraid, especially if you're new and starting out on this, then they're afraid to ask for payment because they're not really certain what they should be doing, how much work they should do before it's fair to go ahead and ask someone for compensation for it. And they might feel that it's crooked to ask for any type of payment before they've even done anything for it. And they're not really sure what is the professional standard and practice for how they should ask for payment. So for this round, I definitely gotta give it to the artists here. Artists need to have payment first. And I tell you why, especially listen to this if you're an art client, because it shows your commitment to the project and establishes a really important reciprocal relationship of trust. And that is foundational to a good working relationship. It's also important because not paying an artist at the beginning of a project really reinforces negative feelings of being undervalued as an artist. Like we're not important and that's not cool. So if you are an artist, my friend, I wanna give you this advice. Never, ever do anything on a project until you are paid for it, all right? Don't do anything, don't sketch, don't pick up a pencil, brush, or stylus until you've received some form of payment, whether it's a split payment, partial payment, or full payment upfront, that is what you need to do. Round four now, y'all. We're gonna discuss now, what type of examples do artists need to display for a client to show that they are proficient in whatever project that they're wanting to do? So let's talk about what is necessary and is there a wrong way to do this? Now from the client perspective, they wanna see examples of exactly what they want done. No matter how weird or obscure or off the beaten path that project in mind is, they wanna see examples of exactly what that is because to them that instills confidence into them. And from a client's perspective, they're looking at everything through the lens of a non-artist. Meaning again, that they are not familiar with art making or the process or any technical jargon from artists. They're just looking at it from the standpoint of what's attractive and what's gonna look best for them. Now, from the artist perspective, artists will feel that any type of artwork that they display, as so long as it shows skill, is gonna be okay. This is why you see a lot of like art commission sheets are just full of like totally different random examples of all different things. And artists will understand that art is a set of transferable skills. Just because you can do a photorealistic portrait doesn't mean you can't do anime necessarily. And artists will understand that there's no perfect example for everything that a client wants. So just showing their baseline of skill is going to be an acceptable practice for attracting clients. For this round, I gotta give it to the client. When artists present a portfolio full of examples that are completely irrelevant to what type of job that client wants, and it's not niche down and it is not specific, it's going to cause them to get overlooked. So if you're an artist, my advice to you is you need to niche down, you need to know exactly what your style and your genre is. And if you're not certain how to do it, Go ahead and watch last week's video about the three things that you need to start art commissions because I guarantee you it's gonna be life-changing for you. It's gonna help you get a lot more clients, it's gonna help you focus into exactly what you need. So go ahead and watch that right after this. Now for round five, we're gonna talk about updates. You wanna know exactly what is fair, what is the standard, if you will, about how often artists should be checking in, how they're going to provide proof of purchase, how are they going to back up the client's financial investment. And this is a really big topic, and I wanna jump into this, so let's examine it. So from the client perspective, because they have financially invested into the artist, because they've invested into the project, then therefore they are entitled to as frequent communication as they want. And they can check in and they deserve to see progress on the project at all points in time. Y'all have even seen job postings where clients are requesting artists to live stream their entire creative process so that the client can give live feedback to them. This is not a joke, it's something I've seen many times over the years. Now the reason for this line of thought is that they're actually quite excited but also very anxious about the process. They wanna make sure that it connects to their vision. Now from the artist's perspective, artists understand that art is very ugly and it's a process and it is a very ugly process about 70% of the time. You're looking at something that generally the artist isn't proud of. So therefore artists want to only give updates, generally speaking, when they have something worthwhile to show them because an artist doesn't want to show somebody who's paid for a big project something that is 
completely unrecognizable, then it makes sense to them, but it won't for the client. So they're gonna be very hesitant about showing off something that they're not proud of. And this can lead to very elongated, long gaps between any type of update being given to a client. For this round, y'all, I have to give it to the client. Because of their investment into the project, it is the artist's responsibility to make sure that that client is updated on an agreed upon schedule. And this is a major thing you need to hammer out with each client in each project. What's the duration of time and how often are you going to be checking in and delivering updates? You need to, you are compelled to, because you've been paid to do so, you're compelled to go ahead and give that client updates on it. It's something you have to do and you have to keep them aware of what's happening in the project. Now, if you're not sure what this form should look like, I made an entire video for y'all about how you should deliver updates to clients and what's good enough and some best practices. So go ahead and watch that after this. Round six is gonna deal with, I think, the most important and one of the most heated topics here, which is the rights to assets. Who owns our work? What can be done with it? So let's watch them slug it out. Now, from the client's perspective, they paid for a product, right? They paid for that artwork, and therefore it's theirs to do what they want with it. It is their property. Yes, the artist made it. However, though, they are the originator of the idea, and therefore it is their property. And therefore they can do things like they could sell it, they could market it, they can claim it as their own because they paid for it. I mean, heck, I just bought a plant off Amazon. Amazon can come to me, Jeff Bezos can't come to my house and take that thing back and say, no, 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 that's mine. Don't come to my house and take my plant, please, Jeff. Now, from the artist's perspective, they're the ones who have labored over this, and therefore, they feel that they are entitled to the rights to this project, to the rights to every single aspect that they've done, from sketch to the full rendering of it. They feel that it is theirs, and they feel, too, that if a client goes ahead and claims that as their own or they claim ownership of it, then they are, therefore, in violation of some type of ethical agreement. Hmm. Now I'm gonna lay down the fact for y'all right now, whether you're an artist or client, you need to listen up. It's always going to be the property of the artist whenever artwork is made, except under one major circumstance, and that is if the artist and the client have mutually signed together what is called a NDA or non-disclosure agreement. What the NDA basically says is that it is the property of the client, not the artist. You would very typically see this done in a lot of illustration agencies. You would see this done in firms, any type of corporate artwork, and certainly anybody that works in any professional art industry, they're gonna be signing a lot of NDAs. With that being said, Anytime an artist signs an NDA, it should be for a very fair big sum of money for them because you're not only paying for your time and your efforts, you're paying for your property to be sold. Anytime that an artist creates a product, it is their property. Now, there is a little bit of gray line here, which is this. Just because an artist goes ahead and is commissioned or does freelance work for some type of agency, it does not mean that it is their property to go ahead and monetize and sell. Like, you can't print t-shirts with somebody's OC on it. That is an ethical gray area because you both share intellectual property over it. However, though, it is definitely the artist's intellectual property in the product. The IP, the intellectual thought, does belong to the originator, to the client. But the relation, it cannot be claimed by any means by the client. Now in the United States, that is a violation of many, many copyright laws. And therefore, an artist can, would, and should honestly pursue legal action for compensation for that. It's just not okay. Now, if you wanna learn how to be a better freelance artist, where to find your clients, how to work with clients, and much more, go ahead and watch these videos right here.